the market is obviously unimpressed. Air Asia stocks dropped as much as 6.7% right now, down by about four. What have you got to say to your investors? Well, I mean, I think we've had a, a fantastic quarter. I mean, um, even in Bloomberg, when you were reporting it, you were reporting it against uh, not really comparable numbers. We consolidated in uh, 2017, and the comparable number is in the, in the pro forma. What you're comparing it with just uh, Malaysian results. But profits were up uh, substantially in the fourth quarter, net operating profit up 23%, revenue up 10 And what I'm most proud about was all our associates, including India, uh, made a profit. So uh, we're really happy with the year, and uh, we're looking good for, for 2018. I think the market will digest the numbers and uh, in due course. You know, obviously, our share price has been rising quite a lot. Um, but uh, we just continue to deliver the results, and uh, in the end, that will be reflected in the price. Going forward, though, all eyes on the jewel in the crown, your leasing company, the leasing unit, which is on the verge of being sold. Uh, what's the status of that? Who are the final bidders? How close are you? Well, we had an excellent meeting with the board yesterday. So um, just, uh, you know, I don't want to comment any more on that, but, I mean, um, an announcement will be made um, in, in, in due course. I promised it by the end of March that it would be sold, and I'm sticking to that um, announcement. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'd rather just wait for the announcement when it comes out, which is, which is fairly soon, I think. How many bidders have you had? Uh, we had, um, at one point, uh, five bidders, and, um, you know, it's come down to two now. Tony, no, uh, David, here, Tony. David here in Hong Kong, um, I just wanted to ask you, so y you mentioned when, when you look at the headline figure, and I'm going to give you a chance to clarify, so what you're saying is the headline yeah. figure does not compare apples to apples here. Can you clarify that for us? Correct. Correct, because in 2016, the number that we have to report is just the Malaysian operation. In 2017, we have a consolidated number with Indonesia and Philippines in there. But the uh, stock listing requirements um, doesn't allow us to put a pro forma into 2016. Right. So in the notes to the account, we, we record that. All right, so that so that that's clarified. Fair enough, there, Tony. Now, uh, some analysts have come out though, and I, I can imagine they can distinguish apples to apples here. What they're saying is, when you fold into Indonesia and the Philippines, and I'm just quoting here an analyst from Public Investment Bank, they're looking at an estimate cut to that overall figure by about five percent. Care to comment on that? No, I mean, uh, as I said, we, we're up twenty-three uh, percent on net operating numbers. And uh, if you take out all the one-offs uh, both ways, we're still up 13, 14 percent. Philippines had a, an excellent quarter, and uh, so did Indonesia. We've listed Indonesia, and now uh, we're uh, pushing ahead with the, with the IPO of uh, Philippines and talking to the regulators mm -hmm. as we speak. Tony, when we last um, spoke in Davos, everything... you talked about the possibility... Tony, I'm just going to jump in here. When we spoke in Davos, you talked about the possibility yeah. of having to buy more planes, but not yet. What might you consider? What kind of planes and when will you come to that decision? Well, I mean, we've, we've upped our capacity. We, we took in uh, about 30 planes last year, 24 into operation. Uh, the, the last six will come in now, are coming in now. We're looking at an, another 30 aircraft, so we're growing it quite a big pace. We've been uh, slow for the last few years, but for the first time in our history, all of our associates are now requiring capacity from India to Japan. And so uh, if you look at our order book, we've actually only got 100 additional planes uh, on the 320 and another 100 planes on the uh, 321. So if you, you know, sell out all our existing planes, we have about 200 planes to grow. So we're definitely on the lookout uh, for aircraft. Um, but uh, it won't, I don't think an order will be put in this year. So, no decision on which aircraft. What would make sense, though? Well, right now, with the way airports are going and with the way our, our very strong load tax is, we're at 88%, um, slots are getting uh, more difficult while airports play catch up on capacity in places like China and India and uh, some places in ASEAN. So, we like. The, the larger plane, like the 321, 
Um, that is a, a plane retake delivery in 2019. Uh, the 321neo has a fantastic cost per seat. And so uh, those are the kind of aircrafts that we're, um, we're, we're looking at. Definitely more and, seats Tony, than less seats. Tony, as a final question, you mentioned the Philippine IPO. What's the timetable for that? Can we expect that this year? And since you mentioned China, what's the update of your entry there? Well, I mean, we're, um, we're, uh, let's do China first. We, we're, we're being um, uh, offered many, many options, uh, many different partners, and uh, it's looking more and more interesting uh, every week. Uh, the options either a new AOC or to um, try and, and merge with an existing player. So we're, we're working on that, and uh, pretty carefully, but it's becoming more interesting. Uh, in the Philippines, we, we just have to get through the regulators and, um, you know, ensure that we have the right profit forecast, et cetera. So, uh, you know, we were focused on Indonesia first. Now we're, we're putting all guns on the Philippines. At the same time, AirAsia should have our group structure approved soon by the Malaysian uh, authorities, and mm -hmm. that enables us to move towards my dream of an ASEAN consolidation.